Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Angela Levin told Sky News Australia, The interesting thing for me is Megan has been saying for months now that she is writing her own biography. We all believed it would be moans and groans about how badly she was treated as a royal. It would be another record like Prince Harry's, but only more powerful. She is apparently happy and jolly and has made a change in her life and is only looking forward. The most important thing for her, she will either say how wonderful life is, which I don't think she will bother in a book, or she will go backward and say what a terrible time she had and how awful everyone was to her. Entertainment expert Mark Boardman told Daily Express US, Meghan's memoirs could stir controversy and reignite debates surrounding her relationship with the royal family, especially if she chooses to reveal previously undisclosed details. Any further revelations or bombshells about her time as a royal could impact her career and reputation in various ways, with an almost impossible task to make a further comeback. The impact largely depends on the nature of the disclosures. Positive revelations about her experiences and her charity work could enhance her reputation and strengthen her brand as a humanitarian. On the other hand, if her memoirs contain highly critical, contentious content, it could strain her relationship with the royal family further and polarize public opinion. It's a fine line to walk, and Meghan would need to carefully consider the potential consequences. Boardman also commented on Harry's social life. Boardman told OK Magazine, Prince Harry's social life has notably shifted over the past decade. He appears to have distanced himself from his college friends and lacks a permanent UK residence. During his visits to London, he typically resides in hotels and avoids public appearances. Undoubtedly, Prince Harry longs for his old friendships. Meghan is frustrated that Harry wants his old life back. Meghan loves Harry, but she wants to bring out the better side of him, and she's quite clear on the roles that they should take together, and they are trying to work better together on projects. People are eager to witness a transformed Harry rather than a return to his previous partying lifestyle, which could lead to undesirable media attention. He's young at heart, but he's got someone to keep him in check and remind him of who he is and what he's supposed to be doing. Ultimately, he would 100% love a London base, and he'd love to be on the royal grounds, even if it was in Windsor or one of the apartments in Buckingham Palace. But it's not going to happen. London is where all of Harry's real friends are. Everyone they know in Hollywood, they aren't his friends. But ultimately, Meghan wants Harry to be by her side to support her, to look after the kids and to get his life back on track. And anything going backwards is going to take away from that. Royal expert and writer Duncan Larcombe pointed out how Harry didn't look like his old self at Invictus. Duncan said, I think if you look at some of the original Invictus games, Harry was much more at ease and more playing the role of Joker in the pack to publicize it. I think it's developed to the point now where it's a serious business, a serious event, and something that Harry is staking an awful lot on. I'm not sure that Harry is back to his old self in any shape or form. The Express tells us, according to Tom Quinn, author of Gilded Youth, an intimate history of growing up in the royal family, Harry's family are not best pleased with the current arrangement either. You can't hobnob with celebrities in America for six months and then come back here and pick and choose which events you want to be part of. It's unattainable. I don't think Charles and William will agree to that simply because Elizabeth hated the idea. Harry will remain cut off from his brother, Larcombe said. William's real headache is that he can't get in touch with his brother without risking the contents of any conversation they have being made public. It's a real frustration for him and it totally ties him up. It isn't just about Harry promoting his book, the podcast, or the Oprah chap, but he has revealed some very personal and private family matters. It's so far over the mark of what royals would consider acceptable, and it just makes it impossible for William to trust his brother or make any move towards reconciliation. Broadcaster Esther Krakou wonders if the royal family was actually good for Harry in a protective sense. She told Sky News Australia, Ever since Harry's left and he's been completely in charge of his own image alongside his wife Meghan Markle, it's completely tanked. And it just shows that sometimes actually having the protection of people you may not always agree with is a blessing more than a curse. Palace and Drinker, we're right back. The chief executive of Spotify spoke this week about some of his company's podcast offerings. He suggested that Harry and Meghan's £18 million podcast deal collapsed because it failed to make consumers happy after the Sussexes made just 12 podcasts in two and a half years. Daniel Eck told the BBC, We thought new innovation was needed to happen here. We thought we can come in and offer a great experience that both makes consumers very happy and allows new creators new avenues. And the truth of the matter is some of it has worked, some of it hasn't. We're learning from those and we're moving on and we wish all of the ones we didn't renew with the best of success they can have going forward. One that wasn't renewed was Megan's Archetypes podcast. And there you have it.
Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, or your favorite app of choice. Or head on over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. You don't have to listen to the show again, but it really helps us out. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue, and good times. <laughs>